Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, friends, and welcome to Pods of the Multiverse. We are an unofficial D&D podcast where four of us get together and play Dungeons and & Dragons in some of our favorite settings. My name is Jeppy, and I am playing the DM for our adventures in the world of Icewind Dale. Joining me are three of my favorite people, and they are... Oh, well, I'm Scala. I play Periwinkle Wuggins, a halfling bard, and Master Exploder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Andy. I play Everett, the Reborn Ranger, who is, in fact, pretty prejudiced against tieflings. Mm. Mm. And I'm Jimmy. I play Jib, the Sea Elf Fighter, who is updating his resume after his uh, previous employment opportunity fell through. <laughs> <laughs> your strengths and your weaknesses just didn't, you know, you're, you had too many weaknesses. That's right. That's what it was. I think. But you, you know, know who doesn't have any weaknesses? Our patrons. Our patrons are flawless, <laughs> unimpeachable, infallible <laughs> beings. Wow. Would you care to be perfect? <laughs> then what join our segue. Patreon. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Phenomenal. Um, yeah, if you want to be literally perfect, then you just donate to our Patreon. Um, I mean, what else would you want? There's yeah. nothing else. I'm not even going to sell it anymore. Go be perfect. Patreon. Right. Literally perfect. And it's not even like one of these monkey's paw kind of like, you know, it's too perfect and it's really a bad thing. Like literally actually perfect. It's yeah. Like, it's the best thing it can be. It is the best thing. Like no one would question your perfection. They'd look at the Patreon and they'd be like, oh, uh, this person is a Patreon of pods. Great. They're really perfect. No weak tendons. That's great. No allergy to mistletoe. Nothing. Total perfection. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> if you're allergic to mistletoe, stop that. Go join our Patreon. Anyway, here's episode eight. This is not medical advice, though. No, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> real, yeah no, no, no. Um, no medical advice here. No advice at all. Just go listen to the episode. Episode eight. Here we go. So, the three of you are in the front room of the campaign office. You are there alongside Kessa and Tash, Simon and Roman, and a few other people that work at the office where we last left you all. You had witnessed Oral coming down and raising rooftops and screeching and generally causing panic and havoc in Bryn Shander. What would you like to do or say about this? Probably nothing. You just, just let it be. How would we know that this is Oral without anybody going on about it? You could make out in the streets people screaming about Oral. You could hear that. Okay. Has this happened before? It has been a long time. What do we do? You hear Tash say, there's not much we can do. Get down. Hope for the best. You see Kessa reach for her sword. Is there another way out of this building? Roman looks over to you wordlessly and just wide-eyed shakes his head no. How long does she usually stay here? This is not her usual time. She usually comes at time of sacrifice. This is an attack. We do not know. How far away from the office that we're in is the roof that she's on? Sure, yeah, that's a great question. She's pretty close. She's like five rooftops away. She's not ripping through them, going to the next one. Sometimes she'll sit on a roof, tear into it, look and peer down into the streets. She may come for your roof next. She may not come for your roof at all. There's no real telling how safe or unsafe you all are or how imminent the danger may be heading your way. But you do notice that everyone else at this point, besides Kessa, who's stealing herself, is hunkered down now. Can I try and get some more detail on her form? From the distance, it's hard to know for sure, but she's probably about 20 feet tall if she were to stand upright as opposed to being hunched over this rooftop. Hunched over, she's probably more like 13 feet, but she is quite large. While she mostly presents as a mythical owl-like form, her eyes and expression feel very human, as does the way that her front talons arch almost looks like a raptor dinosaur hands are. It's not like a traditional owl with just the wings. She does have like these front upper claws as well. That's what you're looking at. You're not going to try to fight it, are you, Kessa? I'm not looking to die today, no, but what other choice do we have if it comes for us? Best to be ready than to be on the ground. Run, hide, talk? Run and hide and seem more probable, though. This one does have the idea. Oral cannot be spoken to. Kessa, I would urge you to reconsider this fight, Simon says to her. He'll roll persuasion. 
Kessa looks at him, looks back at Oral, and then actually does begin to hunker down as well. Oral now comes off of this rooftop and heads to a nearby one to her left. She's still about the same distance from you all. Hasn't gotten any closer, but she did stomp onto another roof, ripped it apart, and you see her from this perch go down into the streets and pick people up with her front talon and just crush them in her hand. And about how far away is that? 120 feet, maybe? I look to wink. We are still quite hurt. We must get out of here. I agree. At least someplace where we can scatter. We can't stay in this building. I want to try a perception check. I want to see how fast Oral seems to be moving. Yeah. Just get ballpark movement speed. It's only an 11. On an 11, you have to wait a minute before she swoops to the next building, which this time is getting closer to you. When she does it, it is almost instantaneous. She launches off of a roof and just grazes right into the next one. Okay. She's just diving into these roofs and it's very quick. So we're talking twice as fast as us at least. Yeah. Movement speed. Yeah. We can't outrun this if we were to be in her sights. Yeah. Someone else can make another perception check to learn something else that Jib wasn't looking for. Nope. Perception, I've got a 21. Okay. Yeah, on a 21, you do see she is wider than some of these alleyways. So you think there might be a shot if you take an alleyway. But again, she may be able to, using one of her talents, reach in and grab any one of you or some of these innocent people. Mm -hmm. So that is not entirely safe, though, if the plan is run, that would be your best way is to find some of the narrower alleyways. And then on a 21, Everett, you would know, especially as someone that's been on these rooftops before, they're not made of sturdy material. And if she lands on one, debris also may hit you pretty easily. How flammable are the rooftops of these buildings? They're wood. They're flammable. Wink, did you use all of that dynamite? Yeah, I did. <sighs> mm. Wasn't much of it to begin with. We need a distraction. She is too fast. Well, you're going to have to come up with something else, because I ain't got any of that. We can't sit around here talking about this all day. Let's move. Wink is going to go out onto the street and take a look around and get the lay of the land in terms of what other streets are around here. And Mm -hmm. there's a wall around the city, right? Yes, there is. This is a walled circular city for sure. Where's the nearest wall? Do you want to roll? Perception? 18. The wall is free. I'll tell you, you're probably 20 rows of houses away from the wall. It would be a good amount of running. Okay. On an 18. You see a lot of people just trying to get into houses and hunkering down. You do see a group of dwarves and some halflings actually starting to ready bows. Okay. That's to your left. And yeah, I'd say that's all you see right now. Okay. What's to my right? To your right is just more chaos. Nothing distinct to your right at this time. To your right, though, is the fastest way to the wall of Brinchander. Okay. I start moving in that direction. Wink. Oh, no. And Jib follows. I follow as well. And as I do, I'm going to cast Invisibility on myself. All right. Okay. (laughs) Jib's just out in the street now, alone. (laughs) With Everett. Oh, yeah, right. Everett was following. Wink, wink, where'd you go? Follow the footsteps. Oh, yeah. And I am going to just have my bow drawn, trailing slightly behind Jib. Okay. You see behind you, Kessa draws her sword again, stands up, and extends a hand out to the people that are in this building and escorts them out. And they start to follow behind you. Kessa leading the way. Okay. Do I see Wink's footprints? Would you like me to roll stealth to see how lightly I step? It's up to you. What's your intent here? Is your intent to just not be immediately seen by Oral, but leave a foot trail behind you for your friends to follow? Is that your intent? Because if so, I'll give it to you. That seems like it would require an amount of finesse if you'd like me to make like an acrobatics or something roll to still determine how I step. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll resolve it that way. As long as that's what you want to do. That's a 24 acrobatics. You understand exactly how your pitter-patters work. You leave a reliable trail behind for your party. But as far as swipeable objects for Oral to come at, you are well hidden at this point. Yeah, it looks like I can still do this in foot gloves, I say to myself <laughs> internally. <laughs> Episode one callback, baby. All right, cool. Look, small flipper prints. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Awesome. Jib's just going to follow Wink, whatever plan is okay. going on there. Cool. Awesome. I would say at this point, let's make a group stealth check. How much you all stick out as something that Oral would want to go approach and attack? That's a natural 20 for Simon. Good for Simon. 14. 24. I am pretty sure y'all are good because these people just carried your fucking team. 
two 19s and two 20s. All right, well, I got a 24, so... <laughs> okay. Oral is not at all interested. You're about four rows of houses away at this point, and you do see Oral land on that campaign office and tear apart that roof. Keep moving. Cool. Let's do one more of those, maybe even two. Okay. Unless there's something you want to do in the interim. But for now, I'm treating this as like, y'all are just booking it, right? Yeah. As we're moving, I want to turn back to the gaggle of people following us. <laughs> gaggle. Simon or Roman or anybody who may be listening. Yeah. It's Simon, Roman, Tash, Kessa, and then about three nameless NPCs that were in the building. <laughs> is there anywhere more secure? If we get outside the city, what is to say she won't just follow us? Her attacks don't seem to be following in that pattern. I think once we get outside the wall, we'll be safe. I mean, she's just coming for the city. How would you know? I don't know. I have no idea what happens next. We just need to run. Do we see any other people? Absolutely. Yeah, you do, and that gives me an idea, but what's up? I would just try to encourage them to move in different directions from us. I don't want to accumulate too large of a group here that's going to be a big clump of a target. So if they see us and they try to join in with our little pack. Your retinue. I'm going to try and convince them to go to spread out. Go south. Go north. Go some other which way. Don't group (laughs) up too much. Like, I'm laughing because in my head, the cruel DM in me is like, you're invisible. For all they know, that could be oral in their head. But then oral sounds like <laughs> wink. It's just hilarious to me. <laughs> I mean, if that's what the people of Fringe Hender come to think, so be it. Because so of be this it. incident, that is what I would do. Because you're invisible and, like, there's some weirdness there, roll performance to see how successful you are. Sure, sure. The Bard. Fifteen. Okay, actually, yeah, you don't get everybody, but you get a lot of people. And I'd say by the time you're five rows of houses away from this, you probably have acquired another five people. It would have been much higher, maybe as many as 15 or 20, because it's panic all over the streets. Yeah. But you're about five rows of houses away. Let's do one more group check to determine how noticeable your team here is and how interesting you all present to Oral. And again, throughout this time as you're making this trek, she's been continuing to hop. The campaign office was one of many stops. It wasn't anything special about it just because you all were in it. She just came there and tore up the roof. 17. A 25. 14. Oh, shit. Yikes. The NPCs rolled 1, 4, 1, and 12. Oral does head in your direction. She slams onto a nearby roof. I need a deck save from you all, please. Yeah. Spread out. Scatter. 16. It's a nat 20 plus four. Nice. An 18 over here. You all pass. Great. All right. We roll some dammies. Tash and Roman both take four bludgeoning damage. They seem scuffed and shocked and a little scared, but they're not deeply hurt by that. Cool. You all make it to the far wall, and then you can go left or right, and without a perception check, I'll say to your left is where you can see an opening. You do see a lot of people trying to pour out of the city. To your right is a curve of the wall going to the right, so best guess, the left path is the fastest way to a gateway to get out of the city proper. But you're all welcome to make, I guess, an insight check, and Kessa will do the same. One other question. How tall is this wall? In terms of scalability, a good 30 feet. I mean, this is the major city. This is the most fortified city you'll come across. Okay. I don't know what's going on. Insight, I've got a dirty 20. Kessa rolled well. She'll just say, wait, don't go left or right. Stay right here. Look. And she'll point out that crowd of people pouring out of the city. Even if she stays inside, continues her attack pattern. Look at that crowd. She's going to be coming for them. We should stay here. This might be our safest bet. I'm going to look for cover. I have a question. This wall, are there ways inside the structure itself? As in, can you navigate the walls from the interior of them? Are they wide enough to have a tunnel system sort of thing? Yes. Is it like a castle wall where, you know, there are ways in and up onto the battlement? Yeah, I'd say some of the parapets you do see off on the right side in the distance where the rounding comes in on these circles. So there might be like five, uh, six across the whole city have larger parapets, but those themselves just have doors and staircases that lead up, so you don't walk in the walls to get to them, if that's what you're getting at. But you could maybe make your way into one of those parapets. You said there was a staircase that would lead up to them? That's what you can glean from the open doorway that you're seeing a little ways away. And the only way to that would be from that doorway, or are there others along the wall? So just for clarity here, 140 feet to your left, is the east gate where all those people are pouring out. And as the wall rounds off towards this southwest gate, about 200 feet to your right, 
is a parapet with what looks to be a doorway going into it. Don't know for sure, but you'd guess that there'd be like a spiral staircase that leads to its top as like a battlement. And do I see any people over there? You don't currently. You don't know if there are people inside or if there are people at the top. You can't see that from here. Maybe we can hide in that tower over there. And I start heading that way. Cool. Awesome. All right. Which way did they point? Kessel looks to the ground. Look, we're heading this way. Okay. Cool. Oral is pretty close at this point because she did head your way. But because of all the commotion at the east gate, as Kessa surmised, she will start heading in that direction, which is away from you. So I'd say you all are able to get towards this parapet doorway pretty safely. And as you do, you're leading, right, Wink? I guess I am. Give me a perception check to see what you see as you get into the doorway. Sure. Just a standard 10. All right. Yeah. On a standard 10, easy stuff out of the way. As you expected, it's a staircase. It leads up. There is no one... In the doorway, there's no one in the staircase. You're trying to hear if there are people up top, but it's really hard to, just with all the commotion. So, best you can tell, there may be a couple people up top, but no way to know for sure. All right, uh, start climbing the stairs. Cool. You all can fit in this, so you can probably go single or double file up the staircase. I'm going to make sure the door is closed at the bottom before I go up. Cool, you do that. You can give me a perception check as well, Everett. 19. All right, cool. On a 19, you do see some loose brick at the bottom of this parapet. Might be able to wedge the door shut with an athletics check because you'd be moving around larger stone. If that's something you want to do to keep others from following you. Not yet. Not that kind of ranger. I'll note that, but I will leave it for now. All right, sweet. In that case, you all head up to the top of the parapet. You are able to see the whole of the city, and you are able to watch as Oral continues to wreak havoc towards the east wall. At this point, she is killing a good amount of people, or at least severely injuring them. Hard to see from this distance. You can go ahead and make me a perception check to see what she's doing to the people. 17. I also got a 17. Cool. Would I be able to use my spyglass for this? Yeah, you can give yourself advantage with a spyglass. Is that how that works? That's what you did last time. Okay, cool. Okay, here we go. Great. 22. Awesome. Yeah, so what you're seeing is she's not eating anyone. She's picking them up in her talon and just crushing these people and then dropping them back to the ground. You can't really know for sure why, but even on the 17s, it appears fatal. Like, these people look lifeless as they slink out of her grasp. Andy, as you witness her begin to cause harm to people, something's stirring in you. You you can't quite place it just yet. Uh Uh-oh. And I'm going to leave it at that for now. I just sort of wince, and I say down to Wink and to Jib, (sighs) she is just killing them. Simon will actually put a hand on your shoulder. While she is cold, this type of attack is not normal. I fear there is something else at play here. I will take his hand and remove it from my shoulder. Of course you will. (laughs) Something like what? My best guess would be that as he says this, Oral will let out another loud, loud screech. Louder than the ones that she's been doing as she hits these rooftops. As she does that, the sky gets a bit whiter, and snow begins to fall. It's not a tempestuous blizzard, but snow is lightly falling, and it feels a little bit mistier now. And now, Everett, if you could make me a constitution saving throw. Oh boy. That's a 10. Okay. On a 10. (laughs) You aren't sure why, but all you know is that this feels like something that has either happened to you or maybe to someone you've loved. You don't know, but your head begins pounding, and you will take... Well, that's not cool. One psychic damage. (laughs) (laughs) Bit of an oof. That's what happens when you use D12s. Which I guess is good because I know you're at low health, so maybe that's actually for the best. What a dumb way to go unconscious. What was that? Was that a D12? It was a D6, actually. Okay. Yeah. (sighs) But yeah, I totally agree. Whenever you use a fucking D12, it's like, yeah, one. Andy, after you recuperate a little bit from that massive one psychic damage, the mist, again, thin, but it's overtaken most of Bryn Shander, and she flies above that layer of mist and takes off to the skies and into the darkness. Start talking. Oral knows many things, but Oral feels wrath and jealousy. You said before that there was this black sword cult, and you mentioned this rathesite they're using. I said I believed this may be a... The cult did not make the rathesite. The cult stole it. That is exactly my fear. I told you that I believed it may be being used as a replacement for Shardalin. If my theory is correct, something may be stirring. 
off the coasts of Icewind Dale. Something nefarious. And Oral, she is a jealous being. No one else can exist to threaten the people of her realm. If I am right, she is acting out. You just notice that Simon is staring off to where Oral was. His gaze is fixed in that direction. And he is deep, deep in thought at this point. I'll incite that. I feel like there's more he could be telling us. Yeah, go for it. Hell yeah. That is a 27. Sure. I mean, yeah, he definitely has other thoughts and theories about what is going on with Oral at this point and what may happen next. I draw my knife and I get very close to Simon. And in my other hand, I pull out the manufactured Wraithocyte. If there is something that you would like for us to know, if there could be a reason as to why she came to this place, if you think that this Wraithocyte is what is drawing her near, you will tell us this now. I had every intention of doing exactly that. But he's going to look over to Kessa and just give her a look that insinuates that she can't be trusted. How do we feel about this situation? And Kessa looks to the three of you. She's not going to respond to that just yet. Well, if I recall correctly, before all this chaos, we offered you a deal. What's your position on that? In the moment, I was about to turn away. Frankly, the idea that the three of you plan to rescue Denna from Vetus is outlandish. But I didn't say her name. That is the name of... Denise. Of yeah, Denise. I can figure it out from context clues. Scala, you looked like you were poring over notes, so I was like, yeah, I just wanted to make sure I didn't leave No, I clue. was. I was looking for where I wrote down niece so I could write Denna next to it. <laughs> oh, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> cool. Simon, you said you think you know what comes next. What do you think comes next, Simon? Because I know what comes next. Well, lady, are you suggesting that perhaps our good friends at Fail Barosh will leverage what has happened here today as an excuse to do something brash? That's exactly what will happen next. You're smarter than you look. She'll turn to the three of you. Generally speaking, I would like to take you up on your offer, but I think we should make an amendment here. All I care about is getting Denna to safety. I don't care about you. I do not care about Fail Barosh, and I do not care about Vitas. What will happen next, I believe, is that... Fail will use this, she gestures out to the chaos of Bryn Shander, as a rationale to go to Solstice Isle and kill Oral. As she says kill Oral, you hear Simon scoff and laugh at that. No role needed. You all remember right before this happened that Simon told you Oral can't just be killed. That's what happens next. This may present an opportunity. Maybe we actually can rescue Denna. Maybe we can do something here. Sounds like you have a plan that you would like to inform us of? I don't know where she is. The letter that you found about Kessa. What did it say again? Tash will say, I believe it mentioned that the girl was relevant to Oral in some way. And at this, give me an insight check because you notice Kessa has a particular look on her. Insight 19. 11. Also 19. I'm using the floor roll. All right. On an 11, wink, you notice sadness. At the mention that this girl may have involvement with Oral, Kessa looks sad. On the 19, Jib and Everett, you get the sense that this is something that has haunted this family. You don't know for how long, but there is something deeply personal about what was just said. Guess uh, this niece of yours, how old is she? She's 12. And how long ago was she taken hostage for you to be forced into the position you are in? Not very long ago. About a month ago, I... Started to poke holes in frostbite. At this time, there wasn't really too much going on. Only a few people murdered in some of the other towns. But this didn't feel like a normal Vetus operation. And then they took her. I don't know why this is so important to them. Ever since I woke up the way that I am, I have had a deep, suspicious sensation that I am here for some reason I do not, cannot fully understand. Guess I am sorry for this questioning if it makes you uncomfortable, but I must know. What? What does this girl look like? Everett, you're not sorry. You're not sorry in the same way I wouldn't be sorry. That's okay. I am a professional, Kessa. I will get my answers. This is her. She pulls out a picture of a young girl from her breast pocket, and she looks very familiar to you. I fucking thought so. I fucking thought so. (laughs) How is this possible? This child. I have seen her before, in my dreams, in my mind. I am meant to find her. Well, if the deal stands, maybe you will. Odd though it may be, it seems like our interests are aligned. Everett, you asked me a question I did not answer. What I believe is that if the cult has their hands on this wraithocyte, 
they may be able to bring back a devil. This is what Shadowlin was used for, to recruit them to come together and construct this abomination. Oral can sense these things in her domain. She will have none of it. If this dragon comes to exist, she will not go and dispose of it. She will simply remind us of her wrath and who she is. We will pay for this. I'm sorry, what now? (laughs) It is but a theory. How do you come by this theory? Where are you getting your information from? You seem to know a lot about a lot, and how do we know you're not just pulling it out your ass? Yes, where did you find all of this very astute information? Well, in manners of the occult, my good friend, looking at you, Wink, there is always a bit of pulling it out of your ass, so you say. But Yeah, that's not going to do if we're going to try and do something about this. I need to know how you know what you know, you know? I'm going to roll persuasion to try and get him to tell me more. Okay, yeah, cool, yeah, at this point. 21 persuasion. Yeah. While Oral herself has been well documented, and I have spent nearly a lifetime learning of her, the Black Sword Cult, as you can imagine, less so. But I have known many people who... You used to be one of them, didn't you? There is no used to be with the Black Sword. So you still are one? I am not. But that is not to say I did not spend time in a different cult. Elsewhere in Faerun. I know how these people think, and... What I have heard through tales around Icewind Dale is of this Chardalin, the mindlessness to which they all succumb to when it is in their presence. But what I know is that they've never dabbled in anything else but this Chardalin. And as you say, they are smuggling Wraithosite, as if it is the most important thing to them in the world. Yet this leads me to believe they are continuing their work. And what I have heard is that this Chardalin is what can bring back this devil. That I do not know for sure. But what I can promise you, through my studies of Oral, is that she will let no other terror reign in Icewind Dale. She will remind us, like she did today. But, he looks over to Kessa, I think, Kessa, that you are correct. There is yet another threat that looms closer. She just shakes her head and looks concerned. I think that Vetus, on orders from Felbarash, will take this and head to Solstice Isle. And if what that letter said is true... They may be taking Denna with them. Well, what can we do? Simon looks to Roman when you say that. And Roman just looks back. You still see doe-eyed panic in Roman's eyes at this point. He doesn't look like he has an answer. He kind of starts to talk and he's like, uh, he's stumbling over his words. And Kessa, what can we do? We need to do something. And Tash will say, I can get us a ship. What's a ship going to do for us? Well, if they're headed to Solstice Isle, ship gets us there too. For what? A grand heroic showdown. As if that would stop these people. Kessa will say this. Anything else you have in mind? Why take on an army, private or otherwise? As I look to Wink. When you could simply kill their leader. Wink will become visible at this point. Oh my god, I forgot you were invisible. (laughs) Snow collecting on the invisible halfling's shoulders. Yeah. I'll say, lords don't exist independent of their territory, uh, the things that serve to prop them up. You could kill whoever's going to be leading this force, and their second might just take their place and carry on with the assignment. If they think, however, that they can use Denna to be some sort of weapon against Oral, well, then if we deprive them of that, then maybe they will abandon the Enterprise. Roman will finally speak up. You've been consistent, Wink. And I don't think you're wrong. Look, I know you'll think this is me just being a coward, but I think if you, looking to everyone else, can go and either put a stop to them or deprive them of their weapon, that weakens them. But we've got something here, too. And he starts to point back to the campaign office. If we can recover what you gave us, maybe we can change the way people are seeing this problem. And God forbid the fight you take to them doesn't end the way we want it to. They'll come home to a new one. Seems like the only plan we've got right now. There's one more detail. It's a small one, but you said you wouldn't fight an army, but perhaps you and a crew, because that's something I could get you in short order. I will find this girl, and we will bring her back. I am meant to do this thing. I am not a commander. I am not a leader. You are going to need to pay us far more than all the gold in this city to do what you are asking. Kessa, actually, looking down at the photo of Denna, scoffs at that. (laughs) You're here for a purpose. 
Yet. Won't do it without pay. They are two different things. And you are a fool if you think they are not. It is as Wink has said. To all of you, and I point to Simon and Roman and everyone else, none of you have any idea, any clue at all, as to what you are involved in and what your goals demand. You are all fools. Ain't but one way to learn, though. We made mistakes, too, back home. We didn't understand what we was getting into. I'll tell you this much. You got a lot of different fights going on, as I can see. And they may seem to be connected. You ain't got the resources to fight all of them, so we're gonna have to pick one of them. As far as I can see, right now, we got a target opportunity, and so we're gonna take that fight, do what we can with it. Beyond that, you ain't gonna need to pay me, but I expect my two mercenary friends here, they might be a different story. After a little bit of silence, Roman just says, My campaign. He looks over the wreckage. There's no use for any of that right now. There's plenty of gold left for the campaign. Let's just use it for something that actually matters. And he turns to Tash. Pay them and pay your crew, whatever crew you assemble, whatever crew is left. We'll make them right. Whatever money's left over, let's just see how we can use it to get the word out about what our friends found at Fail Barrage today. Does that sound good to you, Everett? Ask me that again when we are staring down an army of mercenaries. Well, as for me, I don't have too much use for gold, but you mentioned a ship. The ship is not here, but we can get you carriage there in short order. Whose ship is this? Well, it's you, Bows, of course. Mm. We need reliable transportation around ten towns. It's not much. I suspect if Vetus is traveling, they have something larger? Looking to Kessa, if they're headed to Solstice... There's no doubt Garen's made a show of it. Mm -hmm. Ever since the debate, he's had a lot to prove to Tragen. I don't know why. All right. When all this is over with, I want a ship of my own. That's all I ask of you. Well, maybe don't bang up this one too much. You'll be able to make passage through Red Run, through the Red Waters, and down the river into the sea. If Kess is correct and their ship is much larger, they probably need to carriage their way over further across land. Might be able to make up whatever time we'd lose on them. Give me a couple hours here to assemble a crew, find out who's still alive. Carriage will be waiting for you at the campaign office. You'll make way to Good Mead and then hit the ship from there. How many days by water you reckon it is? Carriage will be mostly through the night. You'd make way to the Good Mead dock very early morning. By following nightfall, you'd be at the sea, but... Well, I don't know where Solstice is. She looks to Simon. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I look to Simon, too. <laughs> Everybody does the slow, awkward head turn to Simon. Solstice Isle is not in a fixed location. You gotta be daggum kidding me. <laughs> I almost. It, so that's literally canon in the book, and I'm like, they're not gonna like this detail. They're already so overwhelmed <laughs> with other bullshit right now. <laughs> but the Grim Scale is noticeable. It does not move quickly. This is a large island. I believe last anyone heard is on the western seaboard, which is where you will be dropping off from the river. Plus, best I could tell, that is the direction Oral went. But that does not mean she is headed home. Grimscale is a skull made of ice. It is a gigantic looming structure. I cannot promise you will see it once you hit the sea, but you do not need to be close to know your way once you are near Solstice Isle. All right, is there somewhere we can rest up in preparation? Maybe right here. You can do whatever you'd like. Again, just meet me at the campaign office just a couple hours. The carriage may have a few people. Depending on who we shore up from here versus Goodmead, you could get your rest there as well. I look at Kessa. What are you gonna do? Maybe you ought to come with us. She clutches the hilt of her sword, if you'd have me. Yeah, I think I will. Because to be quite honest with you, I don't trust you anywhere else. I can't say I wouldn't do anything different. If there's anything you want to do, I would say now ain't the time to go shopping for obvious reasons <laughs> because of the state of the city. Otherwise, we can just extract time. Go ahead to when you get in the carriage. You sure I can't go shopping? I want to see if my favorite shopkeeps survived the attack. You know, Flint McRocky, Spitz McGibbons, Trip McTrappy, Tug McTieup, Hammer McNail Gun. Hammer McNail Gun is my favorite. <laughs> Has it been a whole day since I gave the Wraithosite to... Flint McRocky. That might have been two days I, ago. It, yeah, I think yeah. it's been more than one. Either way, yes. Let's just say yes. That would be literally the only thing I would check in on. Okay. You can do that, but he's not there, and you see the roof of his building was raised. I look around. Roll perception. That is a nat one. Yeah, I'll say this. Because you rolled a nat one, you don't know if he's dead underneath rubble or if he's just not at the shop. Because you were not able to really get a good look in there. And I leave. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, I'm going to take an hour somewhere in this span of time to cast Find Familiar again. Yeah, you do that. I'm going to notice the albatross in the sky once more and notice that it's the same bird. Even though I saw with my own eyes, Wink exploded it. <laughs> it's back again. And uh, I guess I'll just look up at the sky and say, good to see you again, old friend. Awesome. Wink, anything from you before we move forward to carriage time? Could I ask around about Isaac? Because we dropped him off in this city. Could I see if maybe we could find him again? Is there a certain kind of role you'd want to do for that? Like a general... You know, persuasion or... I would say persuasion, right? To like talk to people. Or you could do perception to look around. Or you could do both and we can average them and see how you successfully are with both. All right. So persuasion is going to be a 27 to ask around. Perception to then... See if I can actually spot Isaac. Nat one. Oh, oh wait, no. halfling. Halfling. Yes. Oh, that's good. I think that's the first time this has really turned things around. 21 perception. Nice. Okay, cool, cool. You are able to hear that while the name Isaac has not come up, you hear word about some recent goings on, not at the Fail Barash headquarters, but different Fail Barash entities have had trouble and disturbances lately. Not murders, not killings, robberies, vandalism, and someone named the Briar is associated with those things. Mm. Mm. Okay. Leave it at that for now. Cool. And can I follow up on that and maybe see if I can find Isaac hanging out around the scene of one of his crimes. So on a 21, you're able to go to some of those scenes. You don't spot Isaac. Okay. You do spot, though, maybe on like some broken glass, torn fabric that looks a lot like Isaac's robe. So you think the Briar might be the name of Isaac, who might be becoming some sort of folklore hero around Bryn Shander. <laughs> cool. Mystery solved. I was going to try and recruit this guy, but oh well. Flash forward to the barrage. Go on. on. No, I'm really happy. we. I'm genuinely thrilled that we did that. That's great. Thank you. Cool. It's now a little deeper into the night at this point. It's getting late. Not only are you all bruised up, but you're also just tired. It's been a long day. You're standing outside of the campaign office and a carriage with horses, Scala. I'm sorry. This is not the same one. It's not the Felvarosh Vetus one. This is one of Tash's. Oh, wait, no. I said there are no horses here because I fucking hate horses. So what is it, Cheppy? Horses or bears? Or some other third wild thing. <laughs> or Yeah, or some other animal that we're going to be real pains in the ass about. Reindeer. It's got to be reindeer. <laughs> seals. <laughs> no, it's seals. Oh, God. Walruses. Walruses. <laughs> No, yeah, I, then we I can just go right to, across the ice. Giant That's great. penguins. I would love to do walruses, but they're slow on land, I think. Otherwise, yeah, they I are wicked totally slow. Do that. I would love that. Believe me, I would love that. It's another barrage, Scala. You got me for a barrage. <laughs> yes. Barrage part two. Oh, anyway, God. you see the bears. They're there. Different barrage driver. Not that rude. I didn't like one. that last guy. <laughs> he didn't like you. Don't worry. <laughs> I, I know. I, I threatened to kill him. Yes. So. <laughs> cool. <laughs> He really hated us. Amazing. The barrage drives technically an automatic, not a manual transmission, but as they just go. <laughs> but anyway, the barrage stops in front of you, and everyone's outside, but Tash just says, did the best I could you in the time I had. You'll see, I believe we got three of my good friends from town to help, but I think another three waiting for you, plus a large number of the crew steering the ship in good meat. Are those three here? She's pointing to the carriage. You'd best guess they're in there. Okay. I'm going to get in. All right. Appreciate you putting this together on such short notice. Best of luck to y'all, and I get in. Roman, thank you. We'll do everything we can. I believe pretty soon Icewind Dale will owe you a debt of gratitude. Thank you. Everett says nothing and gets in. Of course. All right, cool. As you get in, you see three of your new crew. Two of them look familiar to you. Oh, hello. I don't know if they look familiar to all of you, but Everett, you see Flint McRocky. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Sitting in the far left side corner. This is the Hobgoblin Blacksmith? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it is. Yes. Yeah, nice. it is. A real Chad. Yep. A real Sylvester Stallone ass <laughs> looking <laughs> Hobgoblin. Yo, Adrian! Flint McRocky's there, and you see Jory Palumbo. <laughs> Jory! Oh, hey, Jory. You then also see a halfling female passed out and 
without a perception check, you can smell the air. She's a little drunk. Was she the same one we saw who was like being yep. very festive yep. at the yep. at the other she bar, was. the North Look? Look. Yes, that was the same NPC. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yep. So we recognize all of them. You recognize all of them, but I wasn't sure if you'd remember. But Wink's got a great memory, so yeah, you recognize all three. Pretty cool. Steel trap that mind of Wink's. Wink's a people person. Yeah. Who's gonna be running the loose knot while you're with us, Jory? Well, I suppose nobody, because it got run to the ground. Oh no. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, partner. But you know, something you said there really stirred me. You know, uh, I think it is time I'm maybe be a better person and do throw a horse in this race. I guess in this case it's a bear. Is Kessa with us as well? Yes, Kessa's with you. Okay, cool. Just wanted to make sure she didn't try and sneak away. You know, the theory is that Denna will be there. So, yes, she's in. Okay, cool. And besides, you know, it's everybody kind of owes something to Tash. Tash good people. And, and I also didn't really want Tug McTie up getting the glory here. I could see Tug being part of this crew. But anyway, uh, I'll be helping you all navigate. <laughs> did Tug make it out okay? Have you seen Tug since the incident? Can't say that I did, buddy. Oh, no. Don't talk too much about Tug McTie up with Jory. There's a bit of history there, I think. I'd say that sotto voce <laughs> to Jib. I'm going to ask you to roll stealth. <laughs> Five. <laughs> Eighteen. <stealth. laughs> okay. Yeah, Jory, deep in his own Hell thoughts yeah. about it all. Doesn't Hell yeah. I rolled a five perception. I didn't quite hear that. Would you say? Wink. <laughs> <laughs> Ixnay oh, on God. the Ictiop May. <laughs> I don't get it. All right. <laughs> that's, that's fucking, genius, that's fucking great. That's genius. fucking amazing. But yeah, Jory will just say, classic tug, you know, going to take a cool job like this. But anyway, I'll be navigating y'all. When I wasn't dealing with rope, I was usually up on the nest there. You know, what with needing rope to get up there, it made a lot of sense for me when I was in my ship days. That does make a lot of sense. Thank you for clarifying. Oh, no problem, buddy. <laughs> thank you for recognizing that. Anywho. <laughs> you, you two say thank you back and forth for eight hours. <laughs> 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 uh, Sorry for the awkward silence. Jib does not achieve a long rest. <laughs> Flint will cough. <clears throat> You're not the only shop that got beat down. <clears throat> got all that rubble everywhere. Hey, you. Looks to you, Everett. I hope you are able to complete your project before that happened. I'm fine, by the way. Thanks for asking. <laughs> I can see that you are fine. Uh, I don't know why I like you. Give me that studded letter. Why? He holds out a refined, small, red nugget. Uh, I see. Very well. Sure. Yeah, I give it to him. Awesome. He takes the studded leather. You see him tinkering with it for a little while. And in that time, he just talks about how his shop got damaged, but he can build it back up. But what with him not being able to sell magic, he just needed a paying gig and Tash came calling. So he explains a little bit of why he's here as he tinkers with this. And eventually you see he has actually embedded this nugget into the center of this studded leather piece. It is now fixed in it into a socket that he has crafted in this armor piece. And now you're you motherfucker just socketing s- yeah, socketed the goddamn <laughs> right in the back of a moving barrage what a legend Flint McRocky <laughs> oh yeah he is uh yeah. He, he has got a 375 out of 375 jewel crafting skill in his <laughs> oh my god in his skill this bar, guy uh, of course uh, anyway so yeah what happens here is your studded leather now has this wraith of sight nugget in it once per long rest whenever you are attacked by magic you can reduce its damage by three okay and that's just a flat three. Flat three. Yep. Mm. Cool. Flint will also in that time has said that what with the blacksmith thing and knowledge of weaponry, he's going to be acting as the engineer and cannoneer on the ship. Cool. What's a cannon? It's a big, uh, <coughs> I mean, it's a cannon. Uh, gun on a ship. It shoots iron balls that damage the hulls of other ships usually. What's a gun? When powder and fire love each other very much. <laughs> 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 he explains to you how guns work. Wink, feudal peasant, does not understand. Scratches their head a little bit. Oh, it's like the... I mean, cannons aren't that... I think of the list of shit I've thrown at you all. Yeah. It's like the dynamite, Wink. You know, black powder. It explodes. Oh. Only in this case, it launches a big iron ball. And if we come into enemy ships or big rocks or beasts... Yeah. You dynamite ball the beasts, and then they get hurt. We had a little bit of that sort of powder. Not enough to make weapons out of, but sometimes we'd shoot off a firework or something on a special day, something like that. Think of this as a big firework that hurts. 
Yeah, I guess you could use it to shoot an iron ball. Sounds good to me. It's late in the night. It's the three of you and Kessa, Flint McRocky, Jory Palumbo, and an as-yet-unnamed halfling. I asked Jory, who's that one? Oh, well, you know, uh, big proprietor of my establishment. That's Tainer Garland. She's pretty well known around here. Like for the party, that one. Yeah, I think I saw her crowsing over at the North Look a couple nights back. Oh, she's at the North Look. It does break my heart, that does. But I guess she's got enough of an appetite to wet her beak. She could probably disperse about a couple bars and still keep us all pretty happy. Yeah, she seems like the kind to crawl from place to place. Don't be too scared. Despite all that, she's still a pretty good captain, that one. (laughs) I'll trust you, Jory. I'll trust you. (laughs) Jory's going to roll insight now. I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Lots of captains been known to drink. It's practically a requirement of the job. Maybe that's what makes her so good at it, you know? Jib, you do some drinking too, huh? Fancy yourself a captain one day? Oh, I don't know about a captain, but I sh- sure like to crew a ship, you know. Never thought to be my own captain. Yeah, well, we'll get a good taste for it, we will. Is this where the long rest happens? I'm leaving it open to you all as opposed to dialogue, RPing, but whenever we stop, it'll be the long rest, yeah. All of this is part of the long rest. <laughs> Everett spends the rest of the time silently looking out the garage window. The barrage window. <laughs> Thank you. And not for my sake, but for Scalus. Jib's gonna trance for some part of this. And when he's not trancing, he's looking through the bird's eyes sometimes. If there's anything to see out there, I want to see it. If not, yeah. I assume it's just desolate waste. Geographically, you'll come across, probably right as you're gonna start your trance, a forest, to your right side on the barrage, but to your left side it's just a lot of tundra. There's really not much there. What you can see ahead is still just a long stretch of path before you're going to see any landmarks. So you don't see a ton even through the bird's eye. As expected. I'm going to trance. Wink sleeps. Alright. You all gain the benefit of a long rest with your new party here. Kessa also retires. When you wake up, you will be a few moments away from the dock side of Goodmead. And Everett, you might be able to recall Goodmead as one of the places circled on Kessa's original map. You know it is slightly east, but mostly south of Bryn Shander, and it sits just above the Red Waters. Anything else? Otherwise, you can get out of the barrage, and you'll be at the dock, and you can walk up towards your ship. What time of day is it now? It is now very early morning. Still that light blue, or night is fading. You are able to make out a couple of figures right by the boat on the dock as well. Likely your crew. What does this ship look like as we approach it? It's not like a gigantic battleship. It's mostly wood with some reinforced steel throughout, so the hull is pretty sturdy. I'd say it's probably 150 feet stem to stern. It has a little bit of height to it. You can imagine that below decks is a long galleyway for rowing because you do see dozens of oars on the side that you can see, but there's also like a layer between. So you'd imagine that there's also room for actual sleep quarters in this ship. You also see on this side of the ship four cannons on that middle layer of the ship. It is a mid to large size ship, but in no way like a gigantic battle station. It has sails. It is not steam powered or any of that other kind of shit that I might be throwing at you. This is more of a classic fantasy looking ship than you may have been expecting, considering what you found at Fail Barrage yesterday. When the bear stops through her loud snoring, Tanner jumps awake, looks at everyone still groggy, smacks her lips a little bit, shakes her head and saunters on off. And who are these other members of the crew? You walk up, Tanner is leading the way, and she will stop, and you see three other figures on the right side of the dock. Tanner will walk at the entrance to the ship and then turn around and face you. Everybody's here, huh? Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. Laz Brinley, first mate. This character is NB. You see a bald human tattoos all over their head with... Blue eyes, but in spite of that kind of intense, bald, tattooed look, pretty chipper smile on their face. Laz Brindley, first mate. Yeah, here, 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 here. Okay, next. Navigator Jory Palumbo. That'd be me. Okay. Medic Waylon Triboli. See a male tiefling. Ready to go, ready to go. Flint McRocky. He need no introduction. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This one's my favorite. Who's the cook? Trug Lezeb. Anyone interested? That's spelled C-H-R-U-G. Last name L E Z E B. Yeah, that is an ogre. I'm here. <laughs> ogre. Wow. You see an ogre with a chef's cap and an apron. Uh, that's me. Great, great. Laws the crew inside already? They are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. And then uh, you four, you're the ones we're bringing. Wink, which one are you? Right here, Captain. 
Okay. Kessa Myrethia. Kessa gives a nod silently. Jib? Aye, Captain. Aye. And Everett? I also silently nod. Of course. <laughs> Pissed that Kessa took your move. <laughs> all right, well, let's get going. She just heads onto the ship. You all can roll perception as you walk onto the ship. 19. Nothing. Okay. Boat. <laughs> <laughs> certainly is a boat. Jib is, like, kind of in a state of starstruck. It's a lot emotionally for you to take in, I'd imagine, right now, right? I mean, is Jib considered part of the crew right now? I'd say so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jib is thrilled to be crewing a vessel such as this. He's only ever been a passenger. 17. 17. Okay, cool. On a 17, yeah. Like I described in terms of its size, you see on the top side of the ship, there's netting that goes up to the nest. The sails are adorned with the U-bow symbol. The letter U with a clenched fist going up through it. On the actual ship proper, barrels, rope, really nothing out of the ordinary. As you walk in, to your right is the staircase that goes down into the corners, and then obviously towards the left side, which is the front of the ship, you do see the steering mechanism for it. On the back side of the ship, a staircase also goes up to presumably where Captain would be sitting as well. So, boat shit. Really nothing crazy about this one. The only thing that makes this one special is the adornment on the sails, which implies it's the U-bow ship. All right. Get on board, I suppose. Get on board. All right, cool. So, there are basically going to be a couple different things that we do on this ship. Navigate, hazards, and battle. So you have your crew, as I mentioned, captain, first mate, navigator, medic, engineer, cook, and then the actual people rowing. Navigation checks are going to be some checks. Jib, you add your proficiency to that. Great. Each of you will make them, as will your navigator, Jory. Kessa also makes these checks with you. And then the crew as well can make those. So those are going to be some rolls, and your success will depend on the outcome of those rolls. Environmental rolls will be handled the same way, only instead of using your navigator, also rolling will be Tanner, the captain. And then lastly, battle. When we get into battle, I will talk a little bit about how cannon rolls will work. And there are some other things that you can do in battle as well, which again, I will get into should we and when we get into any battle on the ship. Last thing I want to mention, you can leverage these NPCs. So again, Captain Simple, she works those hazard checks with you. The Navigator, Jory, he works navigation checks with you. Those two are pretty simple. The first mate, Laz. Laz is busy working the crew, but once in a while, you can leverage Laz. Once you use Laz, a two-check cooldown occurs before you can leverage Laz again. And the way Laz works is they work as a bolster for the crew. I will roll on behalf of Laz, and the outcome of that roll will determine what kind of addition to the crew roll happens to help. Waylon, the medic. Waylon can be used by any of you to help heal you, basically. Waylon will roll medicine, and then the outcome of that will determine how much Waylon is able to heal you. But you personally can only use Waylon once, because Waylon has to service the whole crew. And if you choose to see Waylon for any healing, you cannot contribute to a roll that round. Flint assists with combat, and I'll get into that when we get in there. And then Trug. Trug helps with the different mechanics. That is the crew. As the journey wears on, they will lose morale. If your rolls are bad enough, they will lose more morale. And... If they lose all their morale, bad stuff will happen. You can leverage your turn to help Trug cook a hearty meal and help regain morale for the crew. Question about that. I have proficiency in brewing. Could I add my proficiency to that role if I go help Trug? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the outcome of your role will determine how much morale gain the crew would get. So yeah, totally. Any questions or anything you want me to go over again? You'll prompt us for these roles, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want to make sure you've all done any kind of RP or perceptions you've done of the ship. There's not going to be too much right now for the first little leg of the trip, but pretty soon we'll start to have to navigate a little bit more and stuff like that. Okay. On the first leg of the trip, I would like to find a moment to talk to Everett. No time like now, I can tell you that. Unless Everett's fucking hiding from you. <laughs> Everett would not be hiding, but when I get on the ship, I simply find someplace quiet where I can get a good view of the surroundings. Cool. Are you wanting to roll perception for anything in particular, or that's just like flavor? No, that's okay. just where I'm going to be like okay. cool. set up, I think. Awesome. Staying mm -hmm. quiet and out of the way. Sweet. Wink, what you got? I don't think she's going to be coming for us, if that's what you're looking out for. <sighs> that is not what I'm... Look, I understand you might think we're taking on more than we can handle with this, all of this. You know, what you said up on that tower, that wasn't very folk punk of you. I get it. I, I do. Everybody's in over their heads, but 
I might come, we're going to need these people's help for something. You might need these people's help for something. You can't do everything alone. You are quite wise, Wink. Sometimes to me, surprisingly so. But these people, this ship, this crew, Kessa, Vetus, to me they are still a means to an end. This girl is the next piece in a long, confusing puzzle of my mind that I must solve. That is why I am here. I understand. I wonder, once you find all the answers you're looking for, will you be at peace? I do not know if that is up to me. I remember it like it was yesterday, Wink. Waking up without drawing breath, seeing the scene around my once lifeless body. I did not choose to come back from wherever I came from, and therefore I do not know if I can choose when I may leave. Or when I may be at peace. I think I get it. You may think my black heart cold, Wink. That is only because of the circumstance in which I am able to stand and speak to you today. I never met anybody like you once been through what you've been through. I understand you might think you're trapped in a fate worse than death. And I don't mean to seem harsh when I say this, but at some point, in and in about you... None of us chose to be here, supernaturally or no. Sometimes we gotta make our own reasons for being. I guess I got mine, and you're still looking for yours, and that makes you be the way you are. I'm not trying to say you shouldn't be that way, or you can't. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm trying to be a friend to you, I guess, and give you some good advice, but... (laughs) Suppose I'm no good at that when things are so beyond my comprehension. You understand much more than you know. Weak fuckings. You, you have a way of reading people that is not a common trait. You are good-hearted, and as much as I may have once considered this a weakness of a person, it does seem to strengthen you. Thank you, Everett. That's my reason for being, and I hope once all your questions get answered, you find a reason that makes you feel that same way. Perhaps I will be at peace. Fuck off, that was so good. Alright, cool. Fuck right off. I don't even want to do the rest of the episode, I like that so much. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. Cool. Between getting your bearings on the ship, maybe interacting with a few of the NPCs, and then that <laughs> emotional heavyweight moment, you're a decent leg into the trip now. The river network is widening up a little bit. You're not at the sea, but it widens up enough where it's a lake... And there are a couple different ways to go. Jory's like, we're heading westward here, but there are a couple of river mouths here that are on the west side. I don't know which one it is again. I don't recall. What do you all think? Best guess? We're going to go ahead and do our first navigation check. The three of you plus Jory plus the crew below. Kessel will make these rolls with you as well. Int or whiz modifier. And then again, Jib, you can add proficiency. And you can, again, leverage laws to roll a d20 to bolster the crew now, or you can save that for later. Let's go ahead and do our first navigation check. Okay. Flat wisdom, I got a 17. That's an 18 wisdom from Wink. 16. I don't add anything, except proficiency. You have zero? That can't be. You must have an intelligence modifier. Zero. As an Eldritch Knight? Not casting offensive spells. Huh. That's right. I don't rely on the intelligence modifier for anything I do. It's a total of 75. Narrowly getting your bearings. You do choose... Uh A western bound vein of this river And best you can tell moments later It hasn't gone to derail your trip at all It seems to be heading in the right direction All right, Jory Oh boy, oh I am grateful for this crew here We're not doing too bad first leg of this trip Jib, what you think? I think we're doing a bang up job Just fantastic Let me just say (laughs) Really it was me coaxing you to say bang up job Because I knew it I knew it Definitely (laughs) I love, uh, real quick, the barrage when you're like, you know, I do think you're doing a heck of a job here. Like, it's so intense. Oh, in episode five? Fucking sick. (laughs) (laughs) So good. Okay. Keep it up, Jory. Thanks, Jib. Couldn't have picked a better navigator. Oh, God, boy. He's blushing. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) All right, cool. You continue to make your way through this river. And Kessa, actually, before Jory, was like, I think we have a bit of a problem. We've got a problem up ahead. Jory! Oh, that gets a big issue. Tanner, you know what to do, right? Tanner looks to you. It's an iceberg. 
So you see ahead of you now a large iceberg. It doesn't go the entire width of the river. You might be able to navigate around it if you really crank that wheel. But in this instance, there's something else we can do here. All of you can either roll and see how well you navigate past it. Or because this is an iceberg, you are welcome to sacrifice your roll to go and man a cannon and just try and destroy it. The choice is yours. You can either roll to try and get out of the way. Any or all of you can go down and fuck with the cannon. Wow. Try and blast this thing up. That's some video game shit. All right. <laughs> Here at Linguini Studios, we value player choice. <laughs> I think I'm just going to make a dex check on this one. What do you guys think? Mm. So, Everett, you're choosing to dex mod roll out of this one? Yep. And I got a dirty 20. Jeffy. Yes, what's up? Would you maybe allow me to... Probably. I'll attempt to justify this, to roll charisma on this? Yeah fucking sing a banjo to this iceberg? No, to go down below decks and... Because in ships with oars, they would often have like a drummer to make sure the oars are being rowed in the right rhythm. Got you. So could right. go and roll some sort of performance type check. There's going to be another hazard where a more rhythmic rowing would help. With this one, you're trying to bank hard left or right. So I'd say for this one, no, but I got you. Okay, cool. I'll Put that in the bank. Put it in the bank. We got it. I'll roll dex then. Okay. 15 dex. And Jib, what are you doing? Oh, I I was getting kind of excited to fire a cannon, but I guess I'd better go with my friends. So I'll also roll dex. Team spirit. Oh, man. 11. Crew. Do we want to use the first mate on this? Were the rolls that bad? Uh, Jeppy just said, oh, no. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't tell you how they're going, but I kind of slipped up there and I reacted to the dice. Maybe we should. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we can't hold on to them forever, right? we got to use them on yeah, something. Yeah, the, the way it works is that there's just a cooldown for it. So oh. they come back. It's going to be the next two things that you have to do. You can't use laws. And then it's the most world of warcraft ass no thing come on are you heard. kidding me the socketing of your armor wasn't <laughs> well, this entire yeah. episode yeah i uh, let me just roll for let me roll for kessa it's just like fucking frozen throne literally northren yeah this is when they introduced the vehicle bars yes yeah all right everyone has made their rolls but i'm um, what do you want to do i think we're gonna use it yeah let's use laws laws give us a hand here all right Everybody, you know what to do. We're going to go left. Don't even bother with right. Left. Bank left. And okay. collectively. It's probably too late to have asked this question, but... Please do. Can Wink, like, add bardic inspiration to any of this kind of stuff or not? That's a great question. Yeah, yeah. I would say you can do that. I'll say this. If you got time, you can go ahead and spend as many as you have charges for and say, I'm going to use one on Jim. I'm going to use one on... This. Like, you can do that if you want to. You can pop all whatever charges you have. If there's a check where I say you can't make it, I'll let you know. How about that? Okay, sounds good. I think for now, all the dice have already been rolled. I'm going to let it ride. All right, cool. You all bank hard left. This iceberg coming really close. And as you bank that left, you get the tiniest bit of scraping on the ship. You can tell without a percept check. The ship didn't really take formal damage. The hull is fine. But... That was not a resounding success. That was a narrow success for sure. As the iceberg comes out of view, the team has been pushed really hard. Their muscles are tiring. The morale is getting a little bit lower. So that is the crew below restabilizes themselves and gets back to a normal course on this river. Kessa will look back to you all and say, I don't think we're too close to Sharon Garn River yet, but making our way there. As you continue, next up is a classic left-right path. Jory will yell out, all right, we're going right this time. And Kessel will say, this doesn't seem right to me. If I remember, we head left to get to Sharon Garn, and that takes us just below the Iron Master. Jory, I don't know. I think you're wrong. And at this point, let's go ahead and do another nav check. Okay. Laws nowhere to be seen. Likely, they are barking orders at the cook down below. So that's wisdom a 70. Don't suppose you'll let me have my bird use the help action for something such as this. This is a perfect example of how the bird could use the help action. I see this kind of activity. My gut's telling me this way. Or my bird tells my gut to tell me this way. Yeah, you can do a help action here. Okay, yeah. So the bird is 100 feet up and can see pretty far, weather permitting. Okay, cool. Take it. Oh, my God. All right. With advantage, it's Nate. And proficiency? Uh, yeah. Seven wisdom. Oh, no. Oh, yikes. Yeah, Kessa boofed it for y'all, too. May have misremembered her maps. She got a five (laughs) on hers. 
Yeah, so it's not even worth trying to blow anything else on this. Jesus Christ. On a 62, you all take that left at the request of Kessa, and the landmark that she was looking for, known as Iron Master, she notices it getting further away. She knows this to be close to where the river splits off into the sea. There's also a ridge mountain just above it. Those mountains are looking a little bit further away. You've definitely lost some time here. Let's try and make up for that time with another nav check. See if we can get back on the right course here as this river splits off a little bit more, but Jory's a little out of sorts now. We don't really know which one of these to go down. There it is. Mm. Nat 20, 24. I was like, Andy looks happy. (laughs) Is he happy to be lost? I was so confused why you looked happy. Nat 20, (laughs) 24. Do I get to use my bird again? I guess, yeah. Okay, great. I'm going to climb up as high as I can get up to Jory and sing a little bardic inspiration. All right, cool. Cool, I like that. Wow. I I don't know any sailing songs, but I do know some traveling songs. Oh, we might not know where we're going to go, but someday we'll get back to the road, I know. (laughs) Yes. Oh, and it's just add D6. Yeah, and I got a dirty... 20 wisdom check there. Okay, cool. You gave Jory an extra four. Nice. Jib, what'd you get? I got a seven with advantage. Oh my god. <laughs> it's a fucking meme at this point. I mean, it's... It really fucking is. Master Sailor, Jib. <laughs> okay, last navigation roll, I rolled a four and a six. This time I rolled a three and a five. Like, narratively, this is incorrect. <laughs> it always fucking is. You should be on fire this episode. <sighs> Alright, let me roll for the crew and let me roll for Kessa. Jib's luck ran out. Clork's luck ran out. This is Jib now. Crew killing it. Kessa's still out of sorts. Nonetheless, you all collectively almost made a couple of bad choices on this network of the run here, but you do manage to regain that lost time, actually, or most of it on a 94 sun roll. Nice! Yes. Kessa actually apologizes. I'm sorry, I just, I don't know, I must misremember the map. No, it's okay. I'm sorry. I'm out of sorts. I just want to get to Denna. Some more time passes, uneventful. And eventually, those mountains to your right, uh, which would be north of you, um, start to look larger and larger. And in front of you, you see it looks like a deep blue. And you know that the sea is actually just ahead. You're at the edge of this river network after some time on this boat. The crew morale is still pretty good, as you can hear below. They're still able to heave ho and maybe sing a song or two. They're still doing pretty well. Let's hope it keeps up, because unfortunately, what awaits you at the mouth of this river network as it goes into the sea is a small, but maybe still threatening, Vita ship acting as a blockade. Oh, smaller than our ship? It is definitely smaller than yours. However, it is positioned in a way where it's blocking this river channel. This ship, best you can tell, came from up north, wherever Vetus is embarking to the sea, and went their way down south to each side of this river to block its path. It is a wood ship. It has sails. I believe you see on it three cannons and you don't see a ton of soldiers up top but best you can tell they might just be down mid deck waiting with those cannons ready and on the sails of these ships you do see the flag of Vetus telling you that this is a Vetus ship indeed that logo looks familiar to you as you see a shield tucked behind a large imposing letter V that is wrapped in sharp thorns is anything suggesting that they will attack us if we approach slowly or choose not to engage Probably not. They're not going to start firing immediately. You're coming down the river, and yeah, you see the ship. Kessa will motion to the three of you, as well as to Tanner. Let me see what I can do here. Kessa, what makes you think that they will listen to you? Because I'm above them. If you think we can talk our way past this, I'd rather try that than get in a scrap. I've heard stories of cannonballs going straight through a person. Don't want that happening to me. Can't promise anything, but we'll do our best. And if that is not good enough, are you prepared to end the lives of the people on that ship? If you had asked me before they took Denna, I may have had a softer answer for you, but she unsheathes her sword. Not today. Does anyone on this ship know how to use signal flags? I don't even know what those are. Jory, did I hear you say signal flags down there, buddy? Oh, that's right. I think that's what they're called. What you looking for? You know, signal to them that we don't intend to engage them in a fight. Oh, oh, I gotcha. Jory will jump off the nest and grab onto a rope and slide down to the deck While holding that rope, you see a soft yellow flag raises up. Cool move, Jory. Yeah, I think that's the right one. I hope so. I take my straw hat, I hold it over the side of the ship, and I wave it to compliment. (laughs) Awesome. All right, you get closer. You're now right at the mouth 
proper. While we're approaching, I would like to use the nether sand. I would like to apply that to my longbow and hide in preparation to attack if things go sideways. Awesome. Saying to Wink and Flint if they're nearby, I think I would be more use picking off men than firing cannons. Good luck with whatever this is. (laughs) (laughs) I gesture to (laughs) Wink's hat. Okay, cool. You get to the mouth proper of this river. It is now breaking off into the sea. The enemy ship is probably 50 feet ahead of you. The rowing stops. It comes to a stop. You are now in proper shouting distance to communicate, and you see what is likely a Vetus. Goober? Is, 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 <laughs> g- Goober. Mook? Mook. That's the word That's the word Andy uses. Kessa? What exactly is it you're doing on a U-bow ship here? Kessa looks back to the three of you. I... She's going to roll persuasion on this as well. She took proficiency in this. Pretty cool. Got them to agree to some terms. I think they'll more than meet us halfway. I think we'd be pretty surprised at what we're going to get out of these people. Making our way for Solstice, just like you. It's a three on the dice. Plus five is eight. Jib nods along. Uh-huh. <laughs> Okay, but... And he gets a glimpse at the two of you. He doesn't see Everett. Weren't those the two that Garen was storming on about going into that headquarters there? I put my hat back on. I pop up over the side of the ship. Oh, that was all just a big misunderstanding, I think. We had a chat with Kessa, cleared that right up. You know, there's spells what can make a person look like another person? He'll roll Arcana. Don't need to tell me about spells. I know all about it. <laughs> Disguise self. I got it. Yeah, I rolled a 15, buddy. I know. <laughs> so you're saying that wasn't you that stormed in? Well, do you think it was Garen Kang what showed up at the debate? Somebody who's got that ability is out here causing trouble, trying to send you looking all the wrong which way. Now you roll persuasion, bard. I will. Oh, I only rolled a 7. A mere 16. Okay. We can test... I didn't give this mook a modifier. Rolled a 14. Probably doesn't have a plus three. Is relatively persuaded. Okay. Okay. So what are you doing for us then? Why do I let you through? Because that, pointing to the U-bow symbol, doesn't look like anything willing to help this, pointing to the Vetus flag. Well, she told you. We made a deal. We had to scramble after Oral attacked. So we may do with the resources that were available to us. Kessa Garen said not to let anybody through. You're on the hook for this one, all right? Understood, she says. He will take out a sending stone. I will get to the bottom of this, though. I hear anything else. And then the ship starts to move. You're free to go. All right, quick, let's get out of here. It's not going to work forever, but maybe it saved us some blood and some damage. All right, you are now in the sea proper. No more river. Much easier to get lost. You'd be able to easily surmise that navigating your way to a moving and relatively unknown location will not be easy. With that, nothing but open sea ahead of you. Let's go ahead and do another round of navigation checks. Let's get Laz in on this. Okay, cool. I'm going to do the Laz charge. Very nice. I'll do the crew next then. I'm going to roll this one with advantage on account of my bird circling around. Birding it up? This is... uh, 10. Oh, no. I got a 19. A modest 14. All right, Jory. Kessa gets... Y'all can thank Kessa for that dirty 20. Thank you, Kessa. Let's see where we're at. And sorry, everyone. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The sea is something new entirely for this crew. And while Jory may have been on ships that hit the sea before, Jory has never sat the nest in this open sea. Unfortunately, on a 92 group, some roll, you're not making good pace, and the crew can tell. And you lose a little bit of morale, but you still make some progress. Jib's going to take a big, deep breath of salty sea air. Ah. <sighs> All right. Jib is in his element now. All right. Because the crew is feeling tired and they're ready to try and make up for lost time. Let's do another round. All right. Ooh. All right. 21. I rolled a 19. Total of 23. How likely do you think it is when you're rolling with advantage four times in a row for all eight dice to be single digits? What are the... Extremely improbable, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. God damn it, Jimmy. (laughs) It's probably under 10%, but it's not one. Yeah, way under 10%. Yeah, every roll, you're a 45% chance to roll single digits. So already it's more likely you're in double digits That's than right. not. So It's unreal. It's an eight, by the way. These are all with advantage. Crew also did not do well, but let's see how Kessa helps you all out. It's like out. not even a fun meme anymore. If it was a joke, it'd be an old joke by this point. <laughs> 
Curses are no joke. Nay. Narrowly helping make back the time on a 95. You get further up north, which is where you were instructed might be the best path once you hit the sea. Again, passively, this crew's morale will drain a little bit. How, on average, does morale seem? They seem like they've got a good bit of fight left in them, for sure. You get the sense that a couple of bad mishaps, whether you get into a hazardous situation and it goes poorly, or you get lost a number of times, you might have a pretty fatigued and sapped out crew. Okay. And it's funny you ask about that and what might happen, because speaking of hazards, you see a large wave up ahead, and getting this ship to safely crest this thing and land on its other side seems quite frankly terrifying. Cannons won't help you here, you will have to roll. However, Wink, you'd imagine that with enough constant velocity in a single direction steady rhythm the crew might be able to really do something good here and you can go ahead and use your charisma mod and sing a song and stomp a rhythm yes everyone else can make me some flat decks or int checks here for this hazard check and the captain will do the same can i add my boat proficiency you absolutely can oh no i rolled below average oh no that's still a 14 to beat the drums all right you thud these drums rhythmically, and the crew heaves and hoes to this drumming. Heave, ho, heave, ho. Consume, destroy, 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 consume, destroy. Consume, destroy. <laughs> the crew rolls, and I'm also going to give them advantage for that as well. Oh, well, they're going to need it. I only got a nine. Wow, Jim, twenty. Nice. Hey. All right. And Kessa as well here. Dex. There we go. This is her thing. Nice. Wow. Just narrowly, narrowly crossing the threshold of a great success. This was well done. Perfectly skimmed over this wave. Oof. On such an amazing display of teamwork and ship fairing, the crew morale goes back up. They're feeling really good about this. So you have actually regained some morale here in this check. Well, well done. Well, dang, that's the only sea shanty I know. As you smack down on the other side of this, you still do not see any large skull, but you're starting to see these ice flows. You think you're going in the right direction. It might be break off from Solstice Isle itself, but this feels correct. Let's keep pace with one more navigation check as we're getting around these flows and making sure that we're not getting disoriented through them. And I think Laz is off cooldown, right? We did two navs. You burned on the first, then nav, then hazard. Yep. Okay. I don't know if I want to use them yet, but I just want to know that they're available. I did not do well again. (laughs) Everett's a little disoriented. I got an 11. I got a 16. I also got a 16. Okay. You all are scurrying about Pointing in directions, barking your orders. You do see Laz. Would you like to leverage Laz or bank it? How's the crew? Do the crew seem confident? More so now, yeah. After that last awesome wave riding you all did, I mean, they're feeling like surfers. They're feeling pretty cool. You know, they're not singing shanties as boisterously as they were when the journey started, but they're better than they were before. I say we see what happens. Mm, Yeah, I agree. Okay, let's let it ride. Okay, the crew rolls. On a combined 70. Oof. You make your way through these ice flows. Navigate around a few larger blocks. You've gone in a complete circle. You're now at the beginning of these flows once again. You definitely lost time. Fortunately, you know which direction you have to go in coming out of this, but the loss of time does chip away at the morale a little bit. And you sense that while they were feeling mighty cool about that wave, they're back to the state they were right before it. Let's try to get through these flows one more time. We'll do another navigation check here. All right, my bird's going to fly way out in front of the ship. Guide us. There we go. A 21. I just got a 10. Mm. Nat 20 plus 2. Ooh. Nice. Your proficiency and modifier is only two? I don't have a modifier. Oh, okay, that would be why. Jib's not that smart, but he knows what he's doing. All that real-life experience. All right, Kessa will go. I am rolling the crew last again, so laws or no laws. So collectively, we're at a 51, and there's two other rolls and the crew. Laws. Get us out of this situation. Yeah. I was also going to say, could I add my knowledge of a past life to any of these? Now that you're in the sea, yes. Hmm. Okay. I will use one on this. What's it bring you to? Plus six. Nice! So, 27. Okay. Also the bardic, too, don't forget. I know. I'm saving them. I feel like 
Honestly, they'll be more useful in a fight. Yeah, for sure. Cool. So it's Laz time? Laz is actually going to bark at Jory. You know, you're polite, buddy, and I do appreciate it, but we're getting through these flows. Tell us where to go. I believe in you. So that's going to add that to Jory. And then the crew will roll. All right. Once again, you can thank all of yourselves for carrying a lot of this. Narrowly get through these flows on the other side. Don't thank Kessa. She really fucking scuffed that one for you. <laughs> Rolled a four. Don't beat yourself up, Kessa. I'm just rattled. That's all it is. I'm just rattled. I know. I get like this when there's something important. That's all it is. I get a sense that you're kind of a perfectionist, right? They don't take too kindly to the normal mortal process of making mistakes in this job you worked at over at Vetus. It's like they forget. It's like Garen doesn't have a reminder right on his neck of a mistake he made. They don't forgive it. As she says this, and as you get past the ice flows, you do see another Vita ship. This one not acting as a blockade, but it's up ahead of you. You're making pace on it because it is smaller than yours. You're making your approach, so it's getting closer. But as you first see it, it's probably 200 feet away. And it's heading in the same direction you are. Do you think you will be able to talk us out of another encounter, Kessa? Maybe we just follow them. If they're headed for Solstice, then that's a clear uh, navigating marker as any, right? Perhaps. Counter-argument, Wink. Kessa says, if they're headed towards Solstice and we expect a larger Vetus ship to be heading towards Solstice, we'd be up against more at once. In my opinion, we either, in my opinion, take them down, convince them to let us move on and outpace them, and hope for the best up ahead. But if we trail behind and we get ourselves ambushed by them and more, we're already up against losing odds. Can we take the damn u bow flag off this boat? Do you want to help me, buddy? Sure. I'm sorry, wasn't the u bow logo on the sails? It's on the sails, oh my god. <laughs> It's on the sails. Yeah. yeah. I was hoping you'd say that, but yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, damn it. Ugh. Got it. I'm just going to let you rip the sails off. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea. I don't know that much about boats, but it seems like you need the sails. Says Jib, <laughs> who's trying to convince Tash to give him one of hers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know much about boats, but I do know I want one. <laughs> that didn't sound like Jib at all. Sorry. <laughs> Your best Midwestern is just Irish. <laughs> it's not Midwestern. I know it's not, but it's all I know. It's Nora Luian. Anyway, yeah, what do you want to do? Oh, I still like Wink's idea. We're going to have a really hard time finding this island. I am not sure that this is worth the risk. Perhaps we follow for now. I don't know. My idea of following was kind of predicated on the idea that once we got close, maybe we could break off and make our landing at another point undetected. But I don't know the dimensions of this island or anything. I'd rather fight them now then fight them when they've got other ships to support them we can try what we did back at the mouth of the river if you haven't noticed our sending stones are different than some of the ones you may have encountered before i don't know how long before garen gets any message what if garen was right here on this boat with us jib and i both pointedly look (laughs) at everett (laughs) everett puts his finger to his lips beneath his cloak perhaps then we prepare for the worst but try for convincing. I suppose it's battle stations then. Indeed. I think maybe the three of you this time head down to those cannons, just in case. But also, out of sight, might be able to have a better time explaining less of you here. What do you think? I will go inside, but I don't think I'll go down to the cannons. Mm-hmm. I want to try and hide somewhere up here. Just roll stealth for me, and if and when an NPC comes out to discuss with Kessa, I'll remember that. Stealth <laughs> 24. After Kessa gives this suggestion, I'm going to look to the captain. Of your ship. Tanner. I'm going to look to Tanner for an actual order. Confession, hon. Haven't really done a ship with combat before. So you can look at me all you want. This one's probably the one to listen to, motioning towards Kessa. So your order then is to listen to Kessa? For now. Okay. Hi, Captain. And Jib's going to head down to the cannon. The ship uh, comes side to side with the Vita ship. I think of another fucking mook name. Mook McMookie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Boat McVessel. Yes. Oh god. <laughs> you see an elf come out up top, female. Is that a U bow vessel? What are you doing here? Kessel will step up. I'm actually here on behalf of Vetus. Who are you? My name is Ren. I was leading Operation Rune Seeker until whoever was running Frostbite decided to botch the entire operation. Who are you? Oh, well, I'm Kessa. Work for Vetus. Okay, in what capacity do you work for Vetus? I assist Garen Kang with various activities in Icewind Dale. She's going to roll deception. 12, okay, we can test it. So it sounds to me like you run Operation Frostbite. Yeah, you got me. It's been a bit of a situation. 
Anyway, had to commandeer this ship and go get to Solstice. I've been debriefed, and I do recognize this symbol. I know what it means. So you commandeered it. I did. She's going to roll deception again. And let me contest it. Ren got a natural 20. And then I assume all of these are Vetus workers, if you've commandeered the ship. Can I roll insight on this woman? Can I see if I can tell how onto this whole bit she is? Yeah, you can go ahead and do that. 19. Cool. Yeah, 19. She is looking around the crew and seeing none of them that look familiar. None of them have any distinguishing markings that would signify Vetus. She is highly suspicious. Probably close to barking an order at the crew to maybe fire. And we're right there. Yeah, you're side by side. Jib could fire a cannon right now. You could fire an arrow at Ren. Am I someplace where I can make eye contact with Kessa? Can I have put myself behind like a wall or crates or something where she would still be able to see me? I would say you will need to roll stealth to make your way there because you wouldn't have hid in the closest place to the enemy ship. Yeah, and I put myself in this exact same situation when I was disguised as what the fuck his name was. Yeah, but I don't want to just go rogue. I want to give a visual cue as to what's going on but maybe i'm just sort of overthinking things everett has a sending stone he can use to communicate with kessa is that canon yes (laughs) you have the sending stone i gave it to you okay okay right yeah oh and it's to kessa that's right okay i use the sending stone what do you tell her she's unto you i'm going to shoot her now all right (laughs) fuck yeah Kessa looks around. She feels the sending stone. Vibrate. <laughs> Vibrate. Like, she pulls out her flip phone sending stone, her a pager. pager. <laughs> it's a pager. Um, she gets your message, and she says, it's a small detail. They're not technically Vetus. You're right about that. They're actually just much better. And she draws her sword and readies to get in, and we can go ahead and roll initiative. All right. And I think that is where we can end things. Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato. That's me, with music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our Holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a Holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.